All right, it's Simple Bible Study time. Welcome again to the Simple Bible Study podcast. We are opening up today at Matthew, the 26th chapter, and we're starting at the 42nd verse. So grab your Bibles and let's jump right in. Lord, we thank you so much uh, for this chance to uh, just continue to go through your word. We pray, God, that it be a blessing to each and every listener, God. Let it let it just be something that will that they, that they can carry with them uh, as a uh, as just a blessing in their hearts and in their lives. We pray it always in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're picking up at Matthew, the, the 24th chapter at the 42nd verse. Uh, and Jesus is talking. He's still in this Olivet Discourse, uh, speaking from the Mount of Olives. And so he says, watch, therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Watch, not gaze or look. But when Jesus left the earth, the apostles stood there gazing at the sky. And the angel came and said, why stand ye here gazing up at the sky? Get to work. It's an active watching. It's, it's, it's paying attention. We see here at uh, 1 Thessalonians, the um, uh, fifth chapter and the sixth verse, it says, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober, be ready, be sober, looking for the Lord. Verse 43 says that, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered or allowed his house to be uh, broken up. Now, the Lord uses an illustration here to make his point. He's going to use a few in this section. So get ready to, uh, to kind of dive into some illustrations because illustrations help us more to more easily make sense of the things he's trying to teach. He says, if a good man, now that's a master of the house or, or the head of the house. Uh, if a good man uh, knew when a burglar was coming to break in, he could just sleep soundly, snoring <laughs> until that time when the burglar was coming and then just get up and 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 meet the thief or or have the cops waiting for him or something. Uh, but the thing is, he didn't know. Uh, it, it's a surprise when that burglar comes. And 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 and, and of course, that burglar is going to come at a time when uh, that good man is not ready for him. You see, now our Lord is not a thief, but he's coming like one. <laughs> You won't know when he'll just show up. And so we see in verse 44, therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the son of man cometh. Now, the, the, this is the whole point of this section. Be ready, being ready, friends. At all times, we are to be ready. We are warned of our Lord to be ready for his coming. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter again in the second verse says, for you know yourselves perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief, like a thief in the night. And so uh, we, we have to be ready. Now, what does it mean to be ready? Well, here's three ways uh, for us to be ready. Here, here's, here's, here's three things we need to focus on. The first thing is being ready means we are always prepared. Prepared is being ready. Back when I used to play basketball a little more, I was always ready for a game to break out. I was prepared because I kept a ball in my car and some shoes in the car just in case I passed by a park and it looked like I could get a game with some people. <laughs> Brother, I was prepared and you've got to be prepared for the coming of the Lord at all times. If you're living in sin and those sinful things are more important to you than Christ, you're not prepared. If your main desires are the things of this world, you are not prepared. For as Paul says in the book of Colossians, if ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. For us to be ready, you must remain prepared. Number two, if you're going to be ready, if you're going to be ready for the coming of the Lord, you must have your sword. Mm. When Nehemiah and the Israelites were rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem, their enemies came and conspired and they wanted to fight against them. But you know what they did? They just kept on working and doing God's work. 
and 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 they kept on they they just kept on doing what they were supposed to be doing, building the house of God, doing the work uh, that that God had called them to do. Let's read it here. And and at, at Nehemiah four and eighteen, for the builders building God's house, everyone had his sword girded by his side, and so built. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. They 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 had their swords ready to cut up the enemy. And while you're living in this life, you've got to keep your hands on the sword. <laughs> and your sword is this, is this Bible that you hear. The, you hear the pages here rustling through uh, in the background here. This Bible is your sword. You have to keep your hands on this Bible. Hebrews 4 and 12 says, for the word of God is quick. That means it's alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You have to stay in your Bible. It's the weapon we have to fight with. I don't care if it's three verses a day. I don't care if it's one verse a day. Ask the Lord to show you what to read and what it means as we wait for our Lord to come. That's how you stay ready. We've got to stay in his word. It's, 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 it, the, the, the word is how he talks to us. It's how he sends us his messages. It's your sword. Many Christians are in a fight with no weapon. You're being beat up, knocked down, cut up. Why don't you pull out your sword, friend? <laughs> That's how you stay ready in this life, by staying in the word of God. And then finally, the way to be ready is to be looking. I, I once wanted to preach assignment, a sermon uh, titled, What Are You Looking At? <laughs> you watch the news 24 hours and seven days a week, and you're following all the political issues, the war going on over there in Europe and all that type of thing, and pan, all pandemic, all that type of stuff. You wonder why you're, so, why, we, why you're so nervous and scared all the time because of what you're looking at, you see. But we need to look elsewhere. Well, what do we need to look at, Brother Preacher? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> there in Hebrews, the, uh, the 12th chapter. And the second verse tells us that as we wait for our Lord, what we can look at, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We've got to be looking to Jesus, the author, the beginner and the finisher, the completer of our faith faith. That's how we stay ready, looking unto Jesus, not, not stuck on the things of this world, not stuck on all the stuff that's going on, but looking unto Jesus, uh, uh, who is our example. We need not to be caught up in the things of this world. We are looking to him, but not just looking to him. We are looking for him. That's how you stay ready. You live a life looking for him. Uh, the book of Titus, the second chapter in the 13th verse says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's how you're going to make it. <laughs> That's how you're going to make it in this life. That's how you're going to be ready uh, for the coming of the Lord. You've got to be looking to him and you've got to be looking for him. There at uh, the book of Revelation, the first chapter and the 17th verse the Apostle John said, and when I saw him, <laughs> we're talking about looking to him now. When I saw him, uh, what are you looking at? This was the text for that sermon I was, I was talking about. <laughs> when I saw him, not CNN or Fox News, when I saw him, <laughs> when I saw him, he says, I fell at his feet as dead. Now that's worship. <laughs> Instead of always looking at the news and always looking at society and always looking at what's going wrong in your life, look to him and fall down and worship him. <laughs> ah, you got to worship him. And, and John said, I fell at his feet as dead. And he said, and, and, and John said, and he laid his right hand upon me. Oh, when you're looking at him and when you're worshiping him, he'll touch you. 
Uh, no matter what the doctor says, he can touch you. <laughs> if the doctor's report is, is, is too far, if the doctor says you're too far gone, he can touch you. That's why you need not to be looking at the circumstances. You need, to, you need not be looking at how you feel. You need to be looking unto him and worshiping him and he'll touch you. And John said, he laid his right hand upon me. And what did he say, John? He said unto me, fear not. <laughs> When you're looking at Jesus and you're looking to Jesus and you're worshiping Jesus, you ain't got nothing to fear in this life. This world has nothing that can destroy you for even if this earthly tabernacle, this earthly house would be dissolved, this body would fall apart. I have another building of God, not made with hands eternal in the heavens. I have nothing to fear in this world. So long as I'm looking unto Jesus and looking for Jesus and worshiping Jesus, and he's touching me. Jesus said, fear not. Why? Because I am the first and the last. <laughs> when Jesus is the first, brother, that's priority, sister. When Jesus is your priority, <laughs> you will be ready. <laughs> <laughs> you will be ready for his coming and you'll be ready for whatever else happens in this life for him. And so that's how we're going to be ready for the coming of the Lord. We're going to be prepared. We're going to have our sword. We're going to have our hands on our sword, the word of God. And we're going to be looking for Jesus, looking to Jesus, worshiping Jesus, looking unto him. <laughs> that's how you, that's how you'll remain ready for his coming. I quoted DJ quick before. I'll quote him again. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. You can look up the song if you want to. All right. <laughs> Verse 45 says, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall, so, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That unfaithful servant the one who was not prepared for his master's return, the one who instead of using his sword to fight the enemy, the devil, and defend his brothers and sisters, he's now fighting his fellow servants. He's not looking to the master's return. No, no, no. It's, 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 he's not looking for the master at all to come back in this parable. It's an absolute shame when I can go and sit in a church for months and never hear anything about the return of Christ. That many with itching ears are wanting teachers who promise the here and now, the prosperity of this world. It's the sign of a sick and a weak church. And I don't care how much money it has or how many are in the seats. If there's only focus on things of this world and none on the Savior that is to come, the place will be full of unfaithful servants. <laughs> Just like in this parable, drunk, uh, drunken with lust, with pride, and with greed. But listen to 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. <laughs> but we know that when he shall appear, there it is, looking for his appearance, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Listen here. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. You want to know why so many aren't pure <laughs> sitting in the local church at times? Because they're not looking for him. They're not looking unto him. They're not prepared for his return. They're not ready for the coming of the Lord. Because when you're looking for him, when you're prepared for him, when you have your sword and you stay in his word, brother, you're purifying yourself and you are staying ready for the return of the king. We'll cut it off there until next time. Hey, thank you so much for joining. God bless you.